So, Pat, yeah, Patrick. Yeah, so we're gonna start. So yeah, so what we ended up building based off, um, which is kind of a variant off of our original proposal, is a like remote radar sensing robot. So um, we'll get into some of these details more, but we have our distance sensor mounted on our servo assembly that pans back and forth. And from that panning back and forth, we're able to create a uh, radar-esque uh, map plotting those distances based on that angle. Um, so we can detect uh, variations in that to see if there's like intruders in that area. <laughs> yeah, so we tried to have as much uh, data processing on the pick as possible because we felt that that was kind of the, the point of the assignment. Um, what is going on on the PIC32 side is it scans at a fixed rate, and then we understand on the Python end that each new data point, like each each bin of the saved array that we are sending over, corresponds to a certain degree. So that's why it plots, um, you know, point by point, and you'll be able to see like degree by degree. Um, on the PIC side, as we scan, so that changes like the duty ratio of the of the little server motors, we scan, we collect data, we save it to an array, and then we send the whole array at once to be plotted. And that's why you can see, you know, um, not rapid, but like the whole plot updates at once. Um, we also have Python code for like real-time plotting of serial data so that we you would be able to see point by point um, it updating at once. Um, but we found that this was a more modular approach for if we eventually want to add like a, you know, like a tilt functionality or something, we wanted to build something that was easily buildable, you know, or that you can keep adding things on top of it so that it has increased functionality. Um, so keeping it in array format eventually allows you to create a matrix that you could easily turn into like a, a 3D image um, rather than real-time planning. And then- it also, it also borrowed from the, uh, the structure from the FFT lab where we were originally doing the, uh, the fast border transforms uh, listening. It, in a similar way, we're pulling the sensor over a full sweep and then send the data um, back to the computer. Yeah. And in order to keep our timing succinct, so we were eventually trying to use the, or sorry, we were originally trying to use the timeout on, in the, on the ISR um, to get, you know, evenly spaced scans with time. Um, but we found it just as simple to use a proto thread because we, a lot of these built-in functions call other blocking functions, like a delay function um, within them. And it's not good to have that in the ISR. And then it also created different like timing dependencies. So we currently have it running in two different threads. One is just like the scan and collect data thread. And then we have a send data thread so that um, we have them alternating and you can collect more data per unit time. And this structure also uh, allowed us to have very precise timing with the uh, sort of the move, scan, move, scan, move, scan. Mm -hmm. um, this is one, this is like the key timing of the project where uh, we, wanted, we wanted to take the scan after every movement because if we're in motion, it can cause uh, some, uh, some noise in the scans. Uh, but this also allows us to very precisely line up the location of the data points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then if you, I'm glad that the servo is continuing to move. So you'll notice that um, we originally had it, you know, scan the room and then like a, like a sprinkler to like come back, right? Um, but we noticed that having like the bi-directional scanning was a lot, one, it looks a lot better. And two, once again, you're capturing more data per unit time. Um, the downside is when it stops, scanning in one direction, um, sometimes it'll catch like weird edge cases. For example, like you see like the wires that are popping up in the corner only when it like kind of stops at the edge because of that abrupt, uh, abrupt like physical movement. Um, but I don't know, we, we debugged that a little bit like using some delay functions and really narrowing down that that was the issue that it, there was like something that was physically obstructing its path and that it wasn't like a, like a coding issue. Would you mind uh, opening the camera view on the PC so that the uh the panning robot is visible on the PC screen. Uh, or I, I think it, it was. Oh, it, it's. Oh, oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so that. Okay, sure. Oh, so it's not just on the. We have to switch the camera so we can have the other view. Uh, I'm, I'm going to stop video on the Zoom and then switch this on the camera app. Oh, oh does it not let you do both? That's cool. Oh, uh, cool. And then I will, there we go. And there I am. Hello. Yeah, cool. So Hunter, put your hand in the, uh, in the beam out there someplace. Mm -hmm. and there it yeah. is. Yeah, and there it's picking me up right there. And I'll take my hand away. Gone.
Very cool. Yeah. We also have the Python code set up so that you can, so the sensor itself has a four meter range with like millimeter precision, precision, but um, given like how fast we can scan and like how, I don't know, like what resolution we would want the radar map to be up on the Python end, we can specify the maximum distance. So like right now it's only plotting up to 300, that's centimeters, yep. Yeah. Only plotting up to 300 centimeters. Um, but you know. In theory, it popped the whole room. <laughs> we just want it to be like easy for the demonstration. Also, as you can see the background, uh, those file cabinets seem to be about uh, just like 270, uh, 250, 270 centimeters away. So you can, so uh, we didn't want to extend too far so we could see the full range. Um, but, but yeah, as Raquel said, this can extend quite far with the four meters. Um, yeah, so a little bit more about the sensor that we that we chose. Um, the really the only hardware um, that that we chose for this lab, and this was this was intentional because we wanted to minimize the hardware both that you had to set up and also the hardware that we had to debug uh, remotely. So we uh, we picked a sensor. Um, originally, we were looking at an ultrasonic sensor, you know, one of those classic like uh, you know, little ones that look like googly eyes. Um, but we found, uh, but you know, in, in sort of surveying different sensors, we realized that sensors have come a long way since then. Um, and we, uh, we, were, we, were, we wanted to do some, we wanted to do LiDAR, we thought it was super, super interesting, but uh, the very, the more advanced LiDAR sensors cost, you know, cost a lot of money, they're harder to interface with. So we found this really nice compromise uh, sensor, which is a, a, a TOF sensor. It uses an infrared uh, laser, and then uh, it just calculates the time of flight of that laser as it you know, bangs and bounces off of uh, whatever object. So it has better, so as it, it does vary with uh, the material, um, certain materials like uh, stop signs are known to be very reflective, but uh, so it can, so internally, uh, the, before it sends the data over I squared C, it does various checks. And when you run it in, like when you shoot at a stop sign or something, you can get much further than four meter range, but it, it throws diff different status errors to let you know what's going on. Um, but for, for our purposes of scanning a room, it works very well. Um, this is, the sensor is also great because it has a very uh, high refresh rate. Um, it can, it can pull at like, um, I want to say it was like 50, 50 kilohertz, 50 or 50 it's 40. Kilohertz. I think it was 40. 40 yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe 40, but it, uh, it had a, so we, you know, we, we ran through the math and it has a sufficiently high um, scanning frequency to allow us to uh, uh, create more higher resolution images in the future. Um, yeah, the, the main issue with the sensor, of course, was that it ran over I squared C, um, which in choosing the sensor, we did not uh, expect to be that, uh, that big of an issue, uh, given how straightforward SPI was. In retrospect, uh, you know, moving forwards, I will now take I squared C much more seriously. <laughs> and, Our respect uh, goes out to I squared C yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, recognizing it for the, the you know, really what it is. Um, so we learned a lot from the sensor, just which was exactly the goal. Um, but in the future, I will probably uh, stay away from I squared C sensors if at all possible. Um, yeah, but yeah, the, the sensor ended up working really well. And as you can see on the plot, it, it uh, even detects these small variations, uh, which is great. We, we moved, like we had a water bottle in front of it and we shifted it only very slightly and you could see. Yeah, really or like, um, Hunter, I, I believe the sensor still like panned slightly upwards a little bit, like if it's yeah. side view. So if you like stand in front of it and like you walk away, it should detect like like around your waistline or something. Um, and you'll, you'll be able to see like different changes. So there I am that. close and mm -hmm. I'll move. There you go. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. So it, uh, we were very pleased with the resolution of the sensor, and it, uh, that's the, the, what likely happened there was the, uh, the height because of the angle that the sensor is located at. Um, but we, uh, we're very happy with the sensor, and it, it, re it worked very well for the applications that we were, uh, that we were yeah. aiming for. And you all made really nice use of the, uh, the serial debugger capability of the oscilloscope as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when um, we we're, we're, we're very happy to have that. Uh, for debugging, yeah. Yeah, that was cool. In past years, students have been decoding the bits by hand by counting bits on the oscilloscope. And this yeah. is a huge advance. That was fantastic, yeah. Yeah, that was definitely huge for us. Like one of the big things in like testing it was the whole like matching the uh, uh, gigoscope stuff versus the serial prints to try and figure out like our issues. Mm -hmm. Just for a while we were having like I see issues, but then after a time, it became obvious that the serial was incorrect, despite the like, uh, despite the I C protocol actually functioning correctly. 
So that was definitely like a huge tool for us to be able to like quickly yeah. map sensors to values and see that we were getting like actually good readings from our sensor. We just uh, our backend couldn't interpret it correctly. It, it was a really great debugging because we had we had like a fair amount of issues and they were always very different. So we, we learned a lot just like from the debugging process. Um, but like originally our I squared C just wasn't working, right? So we checked out the I squared C debugging and we were getting like all zeros or something. It was just like all nonsense. And then eventually we saw that we were getting, you know, like the right amount of noise, but it was just shifted. Um, things like that. So we we had a lot of subtle bugs that we were eventually able to catch with the Pico scope and uh, with a lot of other techniques. <laughs> Yeah, and the the last part of our project that we wanted to discuss real quick is uh it it turned you know we uh it, and we, we were talking about it earlier and to us it almost seemed uh it seemed obvious like it, we didn't even think about it as part of our project until 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 later but a, a large part of the project was porting over the library for the sensor so uh, one key thing about this sensor was that it had an Arduino library that interfaced with the uh, the uh, ST microcontrollers API. Um, which allowed us to leverage the work that SparkFun had already done, while also letting us uh, practice a very, a very useful skill, which is porting a library designed for one architecture over to a new microcontroller. Um, and this, this was huge. Um, we've all done this to some degree in the past. You know, I, personally, I've, I very hesitantly modified libraries um, to try and get things to work, but it's, I've always been a little scared, a little scared to do it. And this, with this project, we really dove into the deep end on this, and we. Uh, we completely built the library piece by piece, um, porting over the different, porting over the different pieces that, uh, and, and this, especially modifying the very base pieces, um, like like for the I squared C read, and allow, and that allowed us to build up all the other functions um, pretty much seamlessly. So once yeah. once we had the I squared C working, then the init the initialization worked right away. The reading worked well. The reading didn't work right away, but the uh, yeah we were able to uh, rapidly progress through this. Um, using this technique that I think personally will will help me a lot going forward. So, yeah, that's no easy task to to switch architectures like that for an existing library. Yeah, and and in hindsight, it it was it was the way to go because no way was I going to like were we going to write you know like start range from scratch like delay functions from scratch the 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 nuances that went into this like already written library were just too much for like any one of us in the given time to just write from scratch and also well, that's, that just bad yeah. practice. that's what know, i was going to say is yeah. you certainly could but in the amount of time that you had i agree that that would have been quite a heavy lift yeah actually what probably would have been interesting and that's like, good about it. like we i think we understand we understand the api pretty well going in now now that we worked through the library i feel like we could, we could absolutely write our own but in the beginning it was it was a black box you know yeah. Okay. One of the interesting things too is that we decided to kind of like go all in and really pour the whole thing over and map the TARS instead of just using Aiden for a reference and writing our own. So I think that in and of itself is also kind of an interesting decision that we made there. Because um, looking back, I think we could have like writing from scratch would have been miserable, but using it as a reference could have possibly worked. But I still think I don't know that that would have been a better option. It probably would have taken us longer. So. Yeah. But it possibly could have been more lightweight or uh, software-wise. Sure. Well, it turned out really nicely, and I, I like the the aesthetic that you chose for the radar plot is a cool one too. Thank you. Very <laughs> reminiscent of something that you'd see in like a submarine or something. It looks cool. That, that would be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, uh, actually, I went through different uh, matplotlib color codes. Um, it, it turns out this is a, a black background with a lime colored line. <laughs> cool. Well, really nice project um, and a really nice demo. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see that this all came together so nicely. Thank you. Us too. Yeah. Us too. <laughs> well, we, um, I think that we 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 dedicated many hours in lab to debugging you know anything on the C end, but things like the Python end, you know, we we're like fairly comfortable doing that on our own. And th thankfully, we had like the the Arduino that we chose to buy, um, and like not the yeah, we had like the sensor tied to the Arduino. So like all the there are clearly this is like a very modular project, um, but all of the other parts of the project were almost like ready to go as soon as we had the I squared C ready. Um, so. Yeah, I, I was also a little bit scared that the project would not come together, but I mean, it, it was like fairly straightforward after we um, there, there were a couple of scary days. There were a couple scary days. Yeah. 
I think I, think I mean be, because of that, we wanted to have every other part of the project done just to be proactive about it. We love we love a shared experience basically. We um and we knew what we wanted to focus on. This project was to learn the sensor, to learn the I2C protocol, and to learn how to build a library like this and port over the architecture. Um, and then and then work work on the application. So we didn't so we also we didn't decide to you know do the you know do the plot in a whole new way because that that was that was uh, uh, supporting the other things that we wanted to learn. Right. Um, but yeah, actually, that uh, that brings I think that brings us to a, a really you know some some of the testing strategies that we used in this project is that's the last thing we wanted to cover um, because this was a an, you know we, we also made this decision to uh, get a relatively cheap sensor so we could buy a second one um, <laughs> which, which was huge so in this remote work environment right I think we learned a lot about uh, about debugging remotely. And you know, we have this whole class, you know, interfacing with the hardware in this remote access setup. That was really interesting. Personally, I've never worked in that in that format before. But we found it, I think because of that, we found it very valuable to have a um, not an identical system, but a uh, but like a, a smaller, a smaller nugget of the system um, at home. Nugget. So I uh, I picked up, you know, I described our dream from the drawer, we connected the sensor. And then this allowed us, this had like two key advantages is that we could run the Arduino library and test out the different features of the library. And actually we had some issues running the library on the Arduino, but we then ported over those fixes that were straightforward to check on the Arduino. We ported those over to the PIC, which saved us a lot of debugging time with where there was more unknowns, right? This allowed us to confine the systems, what, what, what we knew. Um, and then the second key thing was this allowed us to run the Python and code offline. Because awesome. for a lot, a lot of the debugging, uh, you know, if the TA wasn't in the lab, if, Hun if Hunter was, was out, out of the office, then, you know, and our lab PC froze every other time we connected to it, and then the robot would stop moving, it, it was very difficult to debug. Mm -hmm. So you know, when we were building the radar plot, you know, we iterated over and over again to, you know, to tune to get it just right. Using the Arduino here allowed us to do that very quickly. Um, so nice. it it wasn't the full system, but uh, that sort of smaller piece of the system really, really helped us in debugging as well. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Like, uh, like the demonstration that you just did, where like you, you like stand in front of it, you walk away so that you can like see the difference. Can it detect you at what point? The way that like we did that, like in, in Jack's apartment, was Jack was just holding the sensor, just like turning it at a, what was going to be like a pretty steady pace, and I was standing in front of it, walking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, very makeshift, but <laughs> I pivoted it on a finger, and I was like, I was like, and I'm like, no, keep it steady. You're getting my head. It's <laughs> I was like trying to count the in my head so I could it with the refresh rate of the plot. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, awesome. I definitely think like of the projects I've done. This is definitely one that definitely has a lot of industry facing skills that were definitely like like being able to actually get the full like water break for it, the full I square C working using the tools in the remote way, like how you said you wanted the class to be set up in the way that like people had to work on embedded stuff during the pandemic, I think was very, like I love that we actually were able to stay true to that throughout, like the only exception being Raquel having to go in briefly to do that stuff, but even still that was early. So yeah. I, I, I love, she even made the joke, she was remote controlling the desktop she was sitting next to. <laughs> well, that was insane. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it all, from that perspective too, it, our project really met like that goal of being able to be something that was real to translate. We were able to get build up and gain a translatable skill set. Good, awesome, awesome. That's the goal. Very nice. Well, cool. Awesome. Really nice.